Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Bootleg, a Tennessee and uh, high school football weekly talk show where we talk all things high school football looking at week eight. Of course, this show is presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. I want to thank them for their continued support. Uh, we, without them, we cannot do shows like this. I'm on location. If you haven't figured it out yet, I'm uh, somewhere in Florida. So uh, I'm going to join in right now with Ingle Martin, head coach of CPA. They're undefeated, headed to Oakland Thursday night in what will be our Tennessee game of the week. Coach Martin, how you doing? Doing great, Tom. How you doing, man? Hey, man. Uh, appreciate you joining us. Uh, wish you were here with me. Wish it was sunny, but hey, uh, let's get started. Um, well, yeah. Coach, um, your schedule this year, um, I don't know who makes up the schedule, but you did a one heck of a job with Independence and Brentwood Academy and NBA and Oakland and Cane Ridge. Uh, did a great job with uh, a non-region schedule this year. Yeah, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, our kids have been uh, been asking for, for games like this for a couple of years. And, you know, every two years you get to redo your schedule and uh, fortunate that, that we were able to work it out. But uh, it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun. I think kids have enjoyed it. I think um, our communities enjoyed it and uh, looking forward to a to a great one Thursday night. Uh, Coach, just to jump right into to Oakland. I mean, it's arguably the number one team in the state. Um, you know, they have put on a show at times. I mean, we've got Jordan James and Antonio Patterson and Isaiah Horton and a really good defense. Um, just talk about the challenge they provide you this week. Well, uh, you know, defensively, um, you know, they've got they've got players everywhere. Obviously, Coach Creasy and his staff uh, – do a great job. Those kids play really hard. Um, I think anytime you can turn on film and see uh, a group of kids flying around, um, you know that they're getting coached well, and uh, they certainly are on defense. And then offensively, you mentioned the the James kid. Uh, he's a he's a great player, um, and and he's got a lot of support around him. And uh, Coach Creasy does a great job at what they do. Um, you know, does a really good job of getting his players the ball. Um, Get him the ball in space, figuring out where he can outnumber you, and 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 then just letting him go play football. But uh, you know, uh, Thursday night's going to be a great matchup. Um, you know, they're they're going to have a, a great crowd. I know, I think Rutherford County's on fall break uh, with uh, with you. Maybe, hopefully, they're all down in Florida, and, and the crowd won't be too big of a factor. But uh, we'll see what happens, man. Re really excited about the opportunity. Um, I can confirm they are in fall break. Um, what um, when you guys schedule an independence in a BA and an NBA in Oak, Oakland and Cambridge, obviously that does nothing. I mean, it's all those aren't league games. I mean, this is a chance to kind of see what you guys are, are like against some of the top teams. But I guess also a part of that is you're probably having a hard time finding games anyway. There's not a whole lot of teams that are standing in line saying, "Hey, we want to play you." Yeah, I, th I think the uh, the biggest thing is we've got an administration here that uh, that believes in what we do, and I don't have people breathing down my neck about losing non conference games. And and I think a lot of a lot of coaches uh, feel pressure from their administration to to make sure they don't lose any games. And so for us, uh, you know, our, our people, our, our head of school, Nate Morrow, just wants our kids to to enjoy their experience and uh, you know play great competition. And so uh, we've been able to do that. Um, and, and this schedule has been awesome. You know, we played some really good teams in the last couple of years. But, uh, you know, when, when you play a, a guy that um, has a Georgia offer or committed and you make a mistake, you pay for it, you know. And so if we make a mistake, uh, James is going to be gone. Uh, he's a great player. And so I think for us, we just got to continue to uh, to work on the things that, that we believe in uh, from, a, from just a schematic standpoint. And and our kids just continue to play with great effort, um, and so we're we're excited. This will be uh, it's our last our last game. That's a, that's a non-region game, and we go on fall break next week. So I know our kids are chomping at the bit to to have this opportunity. Uh, Coach, um, obviously this this gets you ready for. I mean, with your schedule, it gets you ready for the po for postseason play. It's going to get you ready for the. You know, if you're fortunate enough to play the Lausanne's of the world, the the, the Lipscomb, which you'll play them in a couple of weeks, the you know some of the top teams uh, across the state that you might be fortunate enough to play in the playoffs, 
is that what you look at and say, guys, if we can hang, hang if we can do our best around these teams, the playoffs are going to be, you know, we're going to be prepared for the playoffs. There's, there's, there's you're not, you're, you're not going to see anything in the postseason that, that you haven't seen in the regular season when you look at this schedule. Yeah, I think that's part of it. Um, you know, the other part of it is our, our kids are, you know, that they've uh, kind of gotten accustomed to, to wanting to go against, um, you know, the best that, that Tennessee has to offer. And, uh, you know, one of our guys that, that played here and coaches with us now, uh, he and I were talking. And, and this, I think, is probably the first time for CPA since we started football uh, that we have a chance to play against the unanimous number one team in the state. And so, you know, uh, as a as a smaller school, you don't get games against the, the highest classification that often. And the last couple of years, we've been able to add a couple of those. Um, you know, the Ravenwood team a couple of years ago, you know, we played a, a big school, Peachtree Ridge, down in Atlanta in 2015. That was a, a 6A school. So we're starting to get more of those opportunities. But um, tonight, uh, Thursday night's going to be a, a unique experience because uh, of, of what Oakland has done with Coach Creasy the last couple of years. And, um, you know, again, uh, they got players running everywhere. And, and Coach Creasy's got a, got a great staff. Those guys, uh, you can tell that they're coached. And, um, you know, it's going to be uh, no secret when we get out there Thursday of why they've been the number one team in the state the last couple of years. Well, I mean, let's be honest. You, you guys are fortunate to have some really talented players as well. I mean, it starts uh, on offense. It's you know, We can say it starts with Cave Law, which it probably does. But your, your front line up there, I mean, they, you've got in the – you know your your offensive line has played pretty well up there for him, and then you, you, you then you consider Langston uh, Patterson uh, as a lead blocker at times for Cade, and and uh, your offense has been very effective. Uh, it has been, um, you know. I think our our kids, uh, just like everyone else's, they they've been working since the summer and uh, trying to get a little bit better every week. Um, and again, uh, we talk about the schedule, but but when you're going up against Brentwood Academy and and their scheme and NBA and their scheme with their players, um, you know, it, it definitely exposes some some weaknesses that you have. And so um, we've been able to work on those things, been able to um, hopefully refine them. And uh, Thursday is going to be a, an unbelievable test um, um, because, again, when you make a mistake with with the players that Oakland has and, and the way that they play, uh, you know, it's a it's a minus two game. Um, you know, it's a it's a no gain. It's a man, I thought I had five yards and I got one because we slipped off of a block. And so um, we've got to learn to, to finish all that and uh, play through contact and, and hopefully be falling forward Thursday night. This right here, um, you, you look at, you know, it's the number one team in Division Two AA versus the number one team in 6A. And according to the AP polls, it's one versus six in this week's uh, Super 25 poll in the state. So um, you'd like to think there's going to be a lot of hoopla there for you guys. How do you how do you get them to stay calm and realize, hey, at the end of the day, this this means nothing for your overall goal, which is to be playing in Chattanooga in December. Yeah, I think uh, you know our, our kids are kind of used to that uh, way of thinking, and you know this group of seniors has played in some big football games, and um, you know a bunch of them started as sophomores, and so they, they've got a lot of game experience. They've got a lot of big. Um, you know, big game experience. I, I was going to say Friday night, but this is a Thursday night game. Um, so, you know, this is going to be no different. I think Oakland's going to play with tremendous passion, tremendous energy. Um, you know, you can see their crowd gets into it. They've got great support there. And so uh, it, this is why it's why you play, playing games like this, to have the opportunity to uh, to enjoy that atmosphere. But, um, you know, biggest thing is, is for our guys to, to stay within what we do uh, to believe in it, um, to play the next play, you know, don't be surprised when a kid who's, who's going to Georgia gets five yards or 10 yards or breaks one, you know, um, it, it, it's got a chance of happening because they've done it to everybody they played against. So when it happens, how are you going to respond? Um, and then, you know, for us just continuing to play, it's a four quarter game, uh, mistakes are made on both sides. And, and I think it's going to be, uh, the team that can kind of weather the onslaught from the other team. Um, and so they they able to to make you pay quickly, and um, you know it's going to be a great great test. Coach, I think you and you and Oakland are somewhat similar. Yeah, you got different um, different kids and everything, but you're you like to play a little more smash mouth. You you're going to grind it out some. He, Coach Creasy wants to keep it on the ground. Um, 
you'll probably throw a little more than what he'll do with 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 Kate, I would think. But for the most part, this is a game that both teams want to win in the trenches. Uh, yeah, I, th I think we're we're very similar in that regard. You know, play play good defense, um, and then be able to uh, to play your style of football on offense. And so, I think both of us, um, you know, uh, enjoy pulling a guard or two. You know, <laughs> Coach Creasy and I've talked about that before. Uh, they do a great job. Uh, again, of outnumbering you at the point of attack, and and those kids play downhill, and so uh, we want we want to be able to do the same thing uh, when we have the ball, and so it'll be a, it'll be an interesting game for sure. Um, but we're we're certainly excited about it. Uh, looking forward to to a great challenge. Well, Coach, I will hopefully see you Thursday night if I get through all the rain and everything heading back. Uh, Thursday, but um, good luck Thursday, and I uh, hope to see you on the sidelines, and um, uh, then after that, you, you all get your own chance at some fall break, so. That's right. Well, well thank you, Tom, for, for everything you guys do at the Tennessee and covering high school sports. We appreciate it, and appreciate you taking time off on your vacation to get this show done. All right. That's Ben Engel Martin, CPA football coach. Uh, they, they play in our game of the week. They go to Oakland on Thursday. For more on that game, we're going to be joined right now by Joe Spears. Uh, we're going to talk about that game as well as the nine other uh, top ten games in week eight. Joined now by uh, Joe Spears. Joe, how are you doing? I'm, do I'm doing well, Tom. How are you? I'm doing fine. Um, if you want to go gloat right now, I'll give you I'll give you uh, 15 seconds of gloating uh, if you want to about this week's uh, this last week's picks. Uh, I mean, neither of us did great, but one of us went four and six, and the other went six and four. So I'll I'll take my two game lead uh, into what should be another good, great week of games. All right, game of the week. CPA seven and zero at Oakland six and zero. Uh, we just had Engel Martin on the on the phone. I think this game is a little bit uh, similar. They're both teams a little more similar than what we like to think about. So, but uh, go ahead and break down this game for me. Yeah, I mean this is going to be a, another great Thursday night game. Oakland's already knocked off one D two AA team in Lipscomb Academy. That was a great game. Um, I think this one could be equally as fun. Um, you get two teams that are very similar. They're going to be a lot of smash mouth. Uh, Cade Law is playing really well at quarterback for the Lions, though. I mean, he had a big game last week. Um, and their defense, led by Langston Patterson, hasn't given up more than 20 points since that first game against Independence. So um, that battle between Patterson and Jordan James, I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, in the end, I think Oakland's just got a little more talent. I think the the Patriots are – I mean, I think they're the best team in the state by bar none. Um, I've got them winning 34-24. to 24. Okay, I agree with the winner. Uh, Oakland will win this game 28-17. I think this game uh, um, may be a little closer than that. Uh, CPA, I think, is, is – a lot of people are going to overlook CPA, and they're going to think about that. You know, they didn't remember Lipscomb and, and how tight that game was because uh, CPA is just as good as them. But they're very contrasting styles. I mean, don't, wanna, don't think Lipscomb and CPA is the same team by any means. CPA is so much more closer to an, to an Oakland in the style of play they want to play. They want to smash mouth it. They want to they want to win at the trenches, but Cade Law will throw the ball more than 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 uh, than say Oakland will uh, this week, I believe. But I think Oakland twenty eight to seventeen in this game. Uh, Ensworth six and one at NBA four and three. Don't look now, guys, but but the Big Red have won four or excuse me three straight. Yeah, and this one's really going to come down to if Marcel Reed plays or not. Um, he injured his shoulder last week. They were still able to gut out that win against PJP. Um, but I talked to him after the game. He said he's going to go get x-rays. Uh, hopefully it's nothing serious, but um, it was his throwing arm. Uh, he, he got hit late. That wasn't really late. He got hit throwing the ball and just went down on it, and there was a pop. So hopefully it's nothing big. Um, they take on an Innsworth team that's playing – really well i mean they're probably one of the best teams in d2 uh AAA. uh levi moore and that duo shamar porter and jacob page um it, again i think this really does come down to if marcel reed plays 
Um, if he doesn't, I think the Big Red could be in a lot of trouble regardless. I think Ensworth is just too talented. This team has a lot of weapons. So um, I've got Ensworth winning 31 to 17. I uh, spoke with uh, Rod Reed um, briefly on on uh, Twitter through DMs uh, this weekend. Uh, X-rays were negative. Uh, he is, uh, Marcel will be day-to-day, -day and he's got bruised ribs. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, I think he'll play um, – if he's if he's healthy, if he can, if they don't have to, if he's not 100, I don't think there's a reason why to play him, because this is not a region game. This is for bragging rights. But the big, you got to think big picture. If you're NBA, I think I think if, if there's a chance of that he gets hurt any any worse, I don't think you play him at all, uh, just because it means nothing for the region standings right now. They got to be thinking about finishing second in uh, D2 AAA, the East Middle Region. Uh, with behind up Macaulay. I think that's the key thing that they need to be thinking about right now. So I say ends worth 24, NBA 10. I think this defensive NBA will step up and they'll make it close. But uh, again, I think Shamar Porter, Jacob Page are two great targets for Levi Moore. And I think that's probably the difference maker. Staying in Division Two, another non region game. Uh, Lipscomb Academy 5 and 1. They go to Knoxville Catholic. Four and one Lipscomb Academy, of course, is D two AA. Catholic is D two AAA. I'll let you go from there. Yeah, I mean Lipscomb Academy got back on track last week. Uh, Luther Richardson, I think he only threw one incomplete pass. He threw a couple touchdowns, a couple to Alex Broom. They kind of cruised in that win over Davidson Academy. Um, they're going to take on a Knox Catholic team that uh, defensively has kind of struggled in recent weeks. They gave up forty four points to Macaulay. You now Macaulay's number one team in D two AAA. Um, they also gave up 33 last week in a win over Father Ryan. It was a close game, 35 to 33. They won it, but this defense has been giving up a lot of points, and that doesn't bode well going against a team like Lipscomb Academy that can score the ball at will. Um, I think this is going to be a great game. I think Lipscomb Academy uh, still kind of I, – I think they're getting back into it after that loss to Oakland. I don't think you can really take anything away from them for that loss. Um, I think they co they go to Knox Catholic and they win that game thirty five to thirty. Uh, looks like we're gonna be agreeing a lot this week. Uh, Lipscomb Academy, of course, quarterback Luther Richardson just received an offer from um, uh, Vanderbilt. Uh, he, again, he's he's gone all season without an interception. One of the best uh, quarterbacks in Middle Tennessee right now. Uh, I think that I think he steps up to the challenge again. I don't think they'll have junior. My guess, my guess is they won't have junior Cheryl again. Uh, if I'm thinking, they, they probably earmark two weeks when they play at C, when they host CPA. I believe that game's at, at Lipscomb. Uh, when they play play CPA in two weeks, I think that's what they're circling around. If, if, I, I don't play him until that week. You know, I make sure he's healthy. And if he's not healthy, you wait for the playoffs. But I mean, because he's too good of a weapon if he's healthy. Uh, I think Lipscomb Academy wins this game, 42 to 21, and. Uh, It'll be a big win for uh, for, for the Mustangs. Uh, beach, four and two. That's where I'm at, at the beach uh, at Springfield. Uh, big game. I'll be honest with you. This is the game I, I kind of flip back and forth on this. What you got? Yeah, I, I completely agree. I mean, Springfield had a, a win over Henry County last week, six to three. Um, their defense is playing really well. Uh, beach had its best offensive game last week against West Creek. They put up 63 points. Um, I think this is going to be a lower scoring game, honestly. I mean, you got two really good defenses. Um, Beach has a couple more weapons, I think, that can make the difference here. Patrick Hill at running back, Jackson Long and Andrew Page outside. Um, for whoever plays at quarterback, Beach has been playing multiple quarterbacks at times this year. Um, I think Beach scores a touchdown late after Springfield keeps it close, and Beach wins it 21-17. to I agree there will be a touchdown scored late. Uh, I agree that it will be a one-touchdown win. Uh, but Springfield, 21-14, the Yellow Jackets are going to bail me out after I shunned them last week. Dustin Wilson will see this and he'll say, let's get one for Krager. So uh, I, I need this one, Dustin. Uh, I think it's a great game. I think it's a good, it's a coin flip game. Um, I think looking at, you know, common opponents, I mean, it's, it's, there's no, there's no, nothing in the tea leaves there. I think, uh, I think Springfield just finds a way to win this game. They played really, they played really well. And uh, they, they win this one, 21-14. Uh, Montgomery Central, Battle of Unbeatens. Montgomery Central, 7-0, 5-0, and 5-4-A. They go to Tullahoma, and that's 6-0, 4-0. Uh, last two of the Unbeatens in that region. 
Yeah, I mean, this is basically, this is for that top spot in that region. Tullahoma's already got wins over Marshall County and Pearl Cone. Montgomery Central still has to play those two teams. So uh, they got a tough tough end of this uh, season there. Um, I, I Montgomery Central's played really well, but when you look at their schedule, they've beaten teams who are combined 7-35 and 35 this season. So they haven't beaten those top-tier teams like Tullahoma has. Uh, they're going to have to find a way to shut down Ryan Scott. He's been great all year. Um, this Tullahoma team's clicking right now. They're playing really well. I think they win this game. They take that top spot in the region. I've got the Wildcats winning 42-20. to 20. As much as we talk about Ryan Scott and Keyshawn Cummings, I think we got to think about this offensive line at Tullahoma. They're huge up front. Ian Pope uh, kind of leads that, that line. I think um, maybe four starters, maybe all starters were back from last year, but they're they're huge up front. Uh, Tullahoma's playing really good football. They're at Tullahoma. It's a long road trip from Montgomery Central in, in the Clarksville area. Uh, Tullahoma wins this game 35-14. to 14. Staying in Region 5-4-A, we got Pearl Cone 6-1, 3-1 in the league. At Marshall County 5-1 and 3-1. And and uh, two very um, different type of, of, of teams. Um, both teams, whoever wins this game, I think will end up being number two. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I mean, they both had narrow losses to uh, Tullahoma. Pearl uh, lost in heartbreaking fashion. Marshall County as well. Um, like you said, two very different teams. I mean, Pearl Cone, they're going to rely on that run game and Barry and Brown. Uh, they're using him a lot at Wildcat. They got back uh, on the winning track last week with an easy win over Glencliff. Marshall County's played a lot of really close games, and they found a way to win them all except for that Tullahoma game. Um, this is a different challenge, though, I think. Trying to find a way to stop Barry and Brown and the rest of that offense is going to be something that they haven't had to face this year. I think Barion's in for a big game, though. I've got them winning 38-17. to 17. I think this is a game that if we, if we can see this, I, this would be the the ultimate test and why Barry and Brown, I think, should be Mr. Football in 4A. I'm going to predict he run for a touchdown, catch a touchdown, and he's going to throw for a touchdown tonight this week. Would not he might be even throw to himself. <laughs> Who knows? But that's it. That's that just tells you how important Barry and Brown is to this Pearl Cone offense. He has done everything. Uh, his receiving yards are down, but they, they you know, he, they haven't. The quarterback and him haven't really meshed yet. Uh, he's doing a lot of wildcat stuff, uh, just trying to get him the ball. Uh, Pearl Cone wins this game in a. Tight one. I think um, uh, Coach Osteen, Thomas Osteen's done a great job with that. Devontae Davis at quarterback's done a great job there of filling in there with it when, when their starter got hurt. I'm saying 28-21, Pearl Cone over Marshall County. This right here is another intriguing game. Gordonsville 7-0 at Trousdale 6-0. Folks, this is a, a week where we have a lot of teams that are off. I give Joe Spears credit for finding 10 great games this week. Thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, this was one that is, is very, like you said, it's really interesting. Gordonsville's playing really well. They've played a lot of close games, but a lot of it has to come down to their quarterback play. Matthew Albrighton's been really good for him, completing 71 of his passes uh, for like uh, for close to 1,000 yards and seven touchdowns. Um, this Trousdale County defense is going to be his biggest challenge, though. They've only given up 76 points. They gave up quite a few points to Harpeth last week. Um, in a game, they were they they kind of cruised in that one, um, but I think you're going to see a lot of Bryce and Claiborne on Trousdale's offensive side uh, to keep Albrighton off the field. I think this is going to be a tight one, but I think the I think Trousdale County in the end comes out on top, 23-16. I think it's a low, very very low scoring game. I think this is a defensive battle. Trousdale County wins this game, 14 to seven over Gordonsville. I think it'd be a really close game. This will be a packed house at Trousdale County with two big football rivalries and uh, an unbeaten team will go down this week. Uh, Wilson Central, we're going into our Wilson County segment of the uh, show. Wilson Wilson Central, 5-2, and 2-2 two, two and two in 5-5A. Five, five they go to station camp, 6-0, and 3-0, oh, and oh, coming off a huge win over Mount Juliet and uh, stayed undefeated there. What do, you, what do you know about this game there? Go. Yeah, st like you said, Station Camps off to their first 6-0 start since 2006. They overcame a two-touchdown two deficit in the final eight minutes to beat Mount Juliet. Uh, it was a great game. You and I were both there. We saw it. The Station Camp team can play. 
Uh, they got a really good running game, and that defense uh, plays well. Uh, Mount Wilson Central also played Mount Juliet close, but they lost 14-7 to in that game. So a couple of teams that played Mount Juliet really well. Uh, a win for Station Camp here, I mean, essentially they're in the playoffs at that point. Uh, they're playing really well. Uh, that defense is as good as advertised, I would believe. I, two of Mount Juliet's touchdowns were defensive touchdowns. They only have one offensive touchdown. Um, I think their defense steps up in this one, too. I got Station Camp winning 24-14. to I think it's a tight game. I think it's a lot of uh, uh, nail bite. I think another nail biter. I got Station Camp winning this game, seventeen to fourteen over Wilson Central. Last game again. We're staying in Wilson County. Mount Juliet six and one, th- three and one, and they're at Lebanon six and one, three and zero. Oh. Uh, I believe those are different leagues, though. Uh, what do you got in this game? Yeah, Mount Juliet coming into this one off that loss, like we mentioned, uh, their offense needs to figure something out they they were they struggled a lot in that game uh with station camp Uh, and lebanon's only allowing 13.2 points per game this season so i mean uh the their their defense is playing well it's going to be another stiff challenge for mount juliet i think i think steven swanner gets he he rebounds at quarterback he had kind of he struggled a lot in that station camp game um i think he rebounds in this one mount juliet wins a close game i got them winning 28 to 24. In my haste of trying to speed up the show as I'm getting rained on at the beach, yeah, go figure, I'm getting rained on. I missed the game. Independence three and four, two and one in Region Seven Six A, at Summit seven and zero, oh, three and zero oh in uh, league play. Summit's coming off a huge win at, at Ravenwood. They can uh, pick a big step of wrapping up this league if they haven't already uh, with the win. Um, what you got? I, I mean, you wrote about him last week. Can Independent stop Dustin Wade? Nobody's been el- n- nobody's been able to. Uh, I thought Ravenwood had the best shot at it, and he still ran for almost 300 yards in that game. Uh, Dustin Wade is playing incredible football right now. So is his brother. This Summit team's made a seamless transition to 6A. Uh, Independence has played uh, okay at times. They've struggled in their losses, giving up more than 40 points per game in those losses outside of Brentwood last week. Lost a heartbreaker in that one. Um, I just I don't think they have enough on defense to stop Dustin Wayne. I don't know if that off- offense can be consistent enough to keep this game close. I think Summit rolls again. They like they have been all season. I've got them winning forty eight to twenty four. Summit, uh, Dustin Wade won my vote for Mister Football. Um, we'll see if anyone else can up up uh, up tick him or up. Uh, I'll do him. Uh, I think I think Destin Wade is the, and Keaton Wade are definitely the, the difference makers in this game. But let's not forget the big guys up front. I think four out of five uh, starters, I believe, came back this year. Uh, and that's a difference maker. Uh, as good as what Keaton and uh, Destin were last week uh, in the backfield, that line is makes makes plays for them to give them a chance to break a, break a play there. Uh, I think I think Summit's run game is going to be way too much for Indy. I think uh, Summit wins this game. 49 to 14. Uh, Indy's got had a, just a brutal schedule. We talked about, you know, CPA on their schedule, but uh, Indy's been tested. If they can get, as long as they get in the playoffs, I think they'll be fine for a couple rounds. But uh, yeah, it's a tough, tough, uh, uh, tough schedule for Indy. 49 uh, 14 Summit over Indy in our last game. Uh, we'll have someone there Friday night. Won't be Joe Spears. I give him a Friday night off since he's got a two game head lead on me. Uh, you're welcome. Appreciate it. Um, but uh, that does it for this week's bootleg. Uh, I will be back uh, in the States next week, I hope. Um, and Joe, I will uh, talk to you next week. All righty. You've been watching the bootleg presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. We want to thank them again. Without their support, we cannot do this show and other cool things like we try to do all season long. Farm Bureau Health Plans, we appreciate your support. We'll see you next week.